Robin van Persie is often associated with his time at Arsenal, Manchester United, and the Dutch national team, but he got a start at Feyenoord. Although the club has the third most Eredivisie titles, Ajax and PSV have largely dominated Dutch football in the 21st century. We're taking over this rebuild in January 2022, and just like the club is doing this season, we're third place in the Eredivisie and through to the knockout rounds of the Europa Conference League. Feyenoord have reported financial losses in recent years. Perhaps that partially explains some of the shakeups in the squad, like former club captain Stevan Berghaus leaving for direct rival Ajax. Justin Bailo seems to be the Netherlands goalkeeper for the future. It's nice that he can further develop his career here in the Eredivisie. Gernot Trauner is actually a new addition to the club, signing for 1 million, and has statistically been one of the best center backs in the league this season. As each transfer window comes and goes, there have been a lot of rumors regarding Marco Sanessi and his future. Tyrell Malassi already showing great potential and has all the attributes to be a top fullback. Closing out the crucial squad role players with Luis Sinistera, who I think is underrated partially because he plays a similar role to fellow Colombian winger Luis Diaz for their national team. As for the summer transfer rivals, there are a few of them. We already talked about Trauner. But Ali Rezerja Hambas joins from Brighton for 1 million and takes on an important squad role. We've got a dynamic duo joining from Molda. Marcus Peterson arriving for 1 million will likely be our right back for the future. And then over in the midfield, Frederick Ersnes will see his arrival for 450,000. Lone rivals have also played a big role in Feyenoord's transfer plans for the 21-22 season. It's difficult to give loanees enough playtime in career mode. But Desters has scored a late winner this season for Feyenoord and gives us more squad depth at striker. Many of you will know of Reese Nelson. He's on loan from Arsenal and has predominantly been playing left wing this season. Who still is a former Eredivisie talent, came up through Azet's youth academy, but he joins the club on loan from Spartak Moscow. And last but not least for the summer arrivals of Fir Marciano joining on a free transfer. Now, while I was recording this rebuild, a few players arrived at the club in the January transfer window. I wasn't able to make all of them happen, but you'll see at least one of those transfers in future seasons. But what better way to start developing the next generation of players at Feyenoord than to sign our homegrown talent? I was looking for a player that might resemble a young Robin Van Persie, and after reloading the save a couple of times, we stumbled upon Leon de Graaf. Although he's listed as a left midfielder by default, he is left-footed, has the four-star, four-star combo, and I think if we put him through a development plan position change, he can work on his shooting attributes and become a future center forward slash striker. Instantly becoming one of the top prospects at the club, but he'll need to earn his minutes as there are a lot of talented players here at Feyenoord. We'll see if we can't find some more promising Dutch talents as we have a five-star, five-star scout to begin with, Searching this entire season, looking for any type of player. As far as board objectives go, we need to pay attention pretty much across the board, but for domestic success, looking to finish in a UEFA Champions League spot and reach the round of 16 of the Aranja Becker, and for Conference League, attempting to reach the semifinal. Here's the squad outlook as we head into the January transfer window. Already seeing some good growth for players like Sinistera and Pedersen, but I think we can further improve this team and align with the Feyenoord storylines of needing to let some players leave in order to generate more funds for the future and reach a positive transfer balance. Although you can never say for sure, Sinesi is one of the players that is rumored to leave the club in either the January transfer window or upcoming seasons. He's a unique player in that he holds an Italian passport, making him a very interesting option for Serie A clubs. So we're going to go ahead with this offer from Napoli, receiving $25 million for this transfer and looking to sign a replacement center back. Domagoj Brodrich has fallen out of Lille's starting 11, and although he's listed as a left back by default, he can play center back, and being left footed, he would be a suitable replacement for Sanessi, although he has a lower overall and probably lower potential as well. But for 10 million, this is a good signing for the future, also adding a player that can play a variety of roles and giving us needed squad depth. That will be the only signing in January, and I've shifted the starting 11 accordingly, giving here Troida the new left center back role. This may be the best case scenario because while he started as a right back, allowing him to play that more central role will give him not only a boost in his rating, but allows us to include both him and Trauner in the starting 11. But having advanced to the knockout status of Conference League, we'll begin our matchups against Lazio. And the first leg ending in a 2-2 draw, we do go through on aggregate though, as the home fixture ends 1-0. More Italian matchups as we face off against Roma in the quarterfinals. The first leg ending 1-0, and unfortunately, the second leg, despite a late goal from DeGroff, it wasn't enough to see us through on aggregate. That did allow us to focus more on the league, and we accomplished a third place finish, which although isn't Champions League, was right in line with my personal expectations for Feyenoord this season. Seeing a difficult matchup and early exit in the second round, courtesy of PSV, who go on to win the competition with a victory against Ajax in the final. Champions League will go to Bayern this time around Atletico Madrid, 
seeing an early exit from Champions League and going on to win Europa League against Leicester. For what it's worth, our exit in the quarterfinals did come to the eventual winner of Conference League as Roma defeated Spurs in the final. Linson has been the top goal scorer for Feyenoord IRL this season, and that is absolutely reflected in this save as he netted 17 goals from 41 appearances. I've got to hand it to Till, though, going up plus two in his rating and getting into the double digits for both goals and assists. With his loan expiring at season's end, perhaps he's a player that we'll look to bring in on a permanent basis next year, but we'll be following along with the career progression of De Croft. He's one of the storylines of this rebuild, and he saw a plus three in his rating as he completed that center forward position change. Moving forward, I'm going to attempt to make him a striker. I think his pace and passing is already similar to that of Van Persie, just needs to work on his shooting and dribbling attributes. And our five-star, five-star scout from the Netherlands came through with another player who resembles another club legend, Dirk Kautz. He not only holds the club's record transfer departure fee, but his return to the club for the 16-17 season was a massive part in the club's success that year and allowed them to win the Eredivisie title. Word objective-wise, I think we did an all right job addressing the areas of the squad that I thought needed improvement as we look to take the step up in season two of this rebuild. A new season always presents challenges if you're going for a realistic Eredivisie career mode. If you're performing well and making strides, it's imperative to review any transfer offers you might receive for top players. But as we get into these board objectives, if you're enjoying the rebuild so far, make sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on future content. Seeing a rise in our transfer budget to 35 million, that's one of the many perks of qualifying for Europa League. But we'll need to advance past Austria Wien first as we take them on in the playoff rounds. They did win their home fixture 2-1, but a 2-0 comeback in our home leg, courtesy of goals from De Croft and January Eredivisie player of the month, Kukchu. That'll place us in a group consisting of Porto, Rangers, and Molda, who remember we've signed a couple of players from already. But as far as transfer offers coming in, I thought this was an interesting one from Liverpool, considering that Sinistera is one of the higher rated players in the squad, and I think it would kind of be fitting to have another winger break the club's transfer record that Dirk Kout held, so he'll be leaving for 60 million as he embarks on his Premier League journey, but Hustil was a priority for me to bring in on a permanent basis, considering he had 10 plus goals and assists. I want him to be a long-term player in this rebuild. Only 10 million for the transfer fee, which is under his evaluation, so I assume his contract was expiring at season's end. This is where some of those January transfer window arrivals that the club made are going to factor into the rebuild. Cole Bassett joining Feyenoord on a loan with an option to buy, which would also break the Colorado Rapids transfer record. Personally, I haven't followed his career too much, but he seems to be in that next wave of up and coming MLS talents. 7.5 million was the transfer fee slightly above his evaluation. Hopefully his arrival proves the difference as he fulfills his dream of playing in Europe. Mayor Divizzi is unique in that it starts its season slightly before leagues that I'm used to, kicking off at the end of July. And here is how the starting 11 looks. A new captain as well with Bilo leading from the back as one of the longtime players at the club. We'll see how we're doing here in January, 2023, second in the Air Divizzi equal on points with Ajax. We'll also advance to the next stages of Europa League as we finish second in our group. That final match day victory against Rangers was crucial. A couple of changes to our starting 11 as Broderich takes over as our new left center back. But I still felt like we were lacking something in the midfield that was an area that the board wanted us to focus on last season. There were a few different directions I was considering for rivals, but a former youth academy player here with Gustavo Hammer playing in the championship at Coventry City and in this save they weren't doing so well. Doesn't look like they have any chances of gaining promotion so we're going to see this arrival for 20 million. A young player and again something that I reiterate in these rebuilds someone who is versatile and can play a variety of different positions. I think that'll put our squad in good shape heading into the later stages of European competitions but how about this for a matchup in the preliminary rounds of Europa League. In season one of the rebuild we saw Atletico Madrid drop down to this competition and now it's PSG. Unsurprisingly we fell in the home fixture 1-0 but we saw a comeback in the away leg, forcing extra time and penalties, but clearly this is something that we need to work on moving forward. But we're going to catch up in mid-April with a match against Ajax. It's been an ongoing title race, however, a win here should be enough to put us five points in front with just three fixtures remaining. On one hand, it is nice to be playing at a real stadium with the Johan Cruyff Arena. On the other, I prefer to have this fixture take place at the stadium that we've created, doing our best to make a look-alike of De Kalp, but we push on. Winning an Eredivisie title was a big priority for me in this rebuild with the 21st century largely being dominated by Ajax and PSV. We want to mix up the competition a little bit and show that Feyenoord can indeed be a force to be reckoned with. De Graaf nearly opens up the scoring 13 minutes in, an RVP-esque sort of run going off the crossbar, but I think Bilo and our defense was largely the reason that we stayed in this match. A mistake out of the back from Ajax 
It falls to Linson. He plays through to Croft. Some good control. Not the most convincing of finishes, but it was enough to give us the 1-0 lead as we approach the halftime mark and get into the second half. Taroff with a good run and a beautiful layoff pass to Hyun Bosch. And as one of the more experienced players in this squad, there's no way he'll be missing from there. Doubling our lead 50 minutes in. And from here on out, momentum was on our side. We seem to be preferring going down the right. And for good reason, because we're scoring from nearly every chance. This effort from Kukchu seeing a slight deflection. There's no way this would have actually been on target. Unlucky from the Ajax defender, but when things aren't going your way, they certainly aren't going your way. Even here in the 79th minute, Jan Bosch sets up to Hraf, and this time he takes it on his left. A curled effort, finding the side netting. He is growing in confidence, and as he continues to become a more well-rounded player, I'm sure he's going to attract interest from other clubs in Europe. But if we want to complete the Van Persie storyline, we need to see some success in European competitions because Feyenoord actually won a Europa League title during Van Persie's first season at the club. That win against Ajax was enough to propel us into first place and keep that spot, finishing 10 points clear, meaning we'll accumulate our first silverware so far in the rebuild. Lifting the trophy in front of the fans at the Kalp, and you know that all of Rotterdam will be celebrating this achievement. As far as the Aranja Becker goes, again, we're going to see a defeat to PSV, this time in the semi-finals. It is Heronvain that win the competition. Real Madrid with a victory against Manchester City in the Champions League final on penalties. And for Europa League, we'll see how far PSG go on in the competition, reaching the final, but seeing a defeat to Liverpool. Conference League sees Wolfsburg with a 1-0 victory against Atalanta. This was the season that saw the Hraf join our starting 11, and that really showed in his goals contribution. 23 goals from 44 appearances, just over a goal from every other match. Jan Bosch just shy of the double digits assist mark as he led the way with nine from 46. And I made the executive decision to loan out Alex Hermans, who is our Dirk Kaut regen. He saw a plus six in his rating up to a 74 overall. Despite winning the league title, we saw a drop in our manager rating. Not too sure about this one, but that just means we'll need to focus more on our objectives next season. Perhaps this will be the year that sees us make strides in European competitions. The question is, is whether we can retain some of the top players at the club. Again, a big focus from the board for us to sign these crucial midfielders. I think this time around, we will try to fulfill that objective. As we also need to win the Eredivisie title, reach the quarterfinals of the Aranja Becker, and for Champions League, reach the quarterfinals of that competition as well. We'll need to get through the qualifying rounds first. St. Pat's will be our first opponent, and they proved to be a good test. Nearly picking up a win in the away fixture but the home leg was a little bit more reassuring as we advance 6-3 to three on aggregate. Playoff rounds up against Olympiacos, a nil-nil draw in the opening fixture. But our performances at home have been remarkable. 3-0 will see us advance to the group stage. Now that financial worries are behind us, we have plenty of budget to work with, roughly 50 million. And here is a look at our Champions League group, Atletico Madrid, Lazio, and Antwerp. When it came to deciding which players to let leave, I ultimately let the decision go down to which offers were most appealing. No clubs from the top five leagues were submitting offers for Bailo, and I was open to getting into talks with Milan for Kokchu. I think he's been linked with moves to the Premier League to clubs like Southampton, but I could see this sort of deal going through as well. We'll receive 50 million for the player departure. Also, Joao Teixeira returning to the Premier League as he transfers to Norwich. I don't think De Croft's story here at Feyenoord is done. Otherwise, I would have accepted this bid from Arsenal as it fit in perfectly with the Van Persie storyline. But for rivals, we need to bring that quality into the starting 11. And what better player to sign as a midfielder than Jorginho Wijnaldum? Another player that was developed through Feyenoord's Youth Academy, making his debut at just 16 years old and becoming the youngest player to ever play for Feyenoord's first team. I'm not sure if that record still holds. Maybe any fans of the club can let me know in the comments. But I felt like the timing was right to make this signing as he is getting older in his career, probably not a part of PSG's first team anymore and had his contract expiring at season's end, which is why he signed for well below his evaluation. I didn't plan on stopping there though, as I was looking to bring in Patrick Wollemark, who recently arrived at the club and is also the most expensive signing from Feyenoord this season. But apparently he is too crucial to his current club. So we'll need to look at another talent from Sweden and a player in the Eredivisie. I feel like this is another route that Feyenoord tend to go signing players that don't necessarily play for the top, top clubs, and Azets haven't been performing too well in this save. Jesper Carlson clearly has great potential in FIFA, and he's putting up good statistics for Azet IRL. So this will be the perfect signing for us down the left-hand side, making the arrival for 35 million, slightly above his evaluation. But when you add that and the Wijnaldum transfer together, it wasn't that much more than what we received for Kokchu's departure. We'll again kick off the Eredivisie campaign in late July, and here's how the starting 11 looks. Still a lot of original Feyenoord players in the starting 11. It seems 
seems like the club's philosophy of extending those contracts for younger players is paying off, but we'll see how we're doing in the standings. January of 2024, we are top of the Eredivisie, this time three points clear of Ajax. Also finishing first in the Champions League group stage, it was a close contest between us, Lazio, and Atletico Madrid, who have been underperforming in this save, seeing a departure in the group stage in both season one and now season three. And when I compare this Feyenoord team to some of my previous realistic rebuilds, we're obviously set at the goalkeeper position, but I feel like some of our other player ratings have been lacking behind, so I'm surprised we're doing as well as we are. We'll push through to the round of 16 in a tough matchup against Manchester City. A late equalizer from the Hraf was enough to put us level going into the home fixture. And again, we dominate at the Kaup. 3-1 means that we're through to the quarterfinals and we will play the team that we face in the group stage, Lazio. The home fixture ending in a 1-1 draw, but in the away leg, it's again a late goal from the Hraf that'll keep this Champions League dream alive Take a look at these semifinal fixtures. I'm hoping that either us or Celtic do advance to the final because anytime you see a team from a non-top five league reach the later stages of Champions League, you just have to root for them. I've expressed my thoughts on RB Leipzig before. They're typically easy to play on simulations. Despite that, we lose the home fixture two to one, but another comeback in the away leg till Wijnaldum and a late substitution end goal from our American signing Cole Bassett means that we are through to the Champions League final and Celtic have also pulled off the improbable, so I am extremely looking forward to this matchup. But before we get into the Champions League final, I quickly want to cover some of the other competitions. We finished equal on points with Ajax in the Eredivisie, but do win the title courtesy of goal differential. Also winning the Aranja Becker, meaning that if we can see a victory against Celtic, that will be the treble. But looking at their starting 11, they haven't made any marquee signings. Granted, they've kept Turnbull in their midfield, who is a good potential player in crew mode. But I wanted to track their progress. They finished top of a difficult Champions League group that included Monaco, Barcelona, and Fenerbahce. Defeated Juventus in the round of 16. Had some good fixtures against Spurs in the quarterfinal. And then obviously saw that victory against Liverpool in the semifinals. Everything to play for here at the London Stadium. This will be the final match of the rebuild. So we'll see if we can tie the record with Monaco for the fastest realistic rebuild to date. Getting into these highlights, we get the first chance with the Kroff. Nine minutes in has his shot saved by the Celtic goalkeeper. Here a long shot effort, and I'm not sure if Bilo got fingertips to it, but regardless, it doesn't find the back of the net. And it was just a defensive battle here as we get into the second half already. It's the Hroff that's again played through on that left foot. He is clinical, giving us the lead at 56 minutes in. Now that Robin Van Persie is an assistant coach at Feyenoord, perhaps he's given the Hroff some tips on finishing in front of goal as he has drastically improved the last couple of seasons. Can we hold on to this lead or maybe even make it to? It's again the Hroff who gets played through on his left foot, goes with a long shot effort, and I think this was relatively close. Keeper certainly did not have things covered. Cole Bassett being brought on as a late substitute. He scored that crucial goal in the semifinals, so I'm hoping that he can maybe double our lead, and he gets his chance, but the finish wasn't exactly what it needed to be. Another one of our younger players, Balde, being brought on, giving us some pace down the right side, but it's Celtic who finally get a chance and Bilo with another crucial stop as one of the highest rated players in this squad. I think he's played a big part in our success for the simulations. But despite chances from both teams, this match stayed 1-0 for its entirety. I was happy to see Wijnaldum celebrating, deciding to give him the captain's armband for this fixture, having Champions League experience for his time at Liverpool, and also with him having such a history at Feyenoord. I felt like that was the right option. Clearly there's something special about this club and I would recommend you try out this rebuild for your own saves. As far as other competitions go, Manchester United win Europa League with a 2-1 victory against Arsenal in the final. Sevilla with a Conference League win against Borussia Dortmund. And that decision to sign Hustil on a permanent basis has paid off. His goal and assist numbers were something else this season, leading the club in both categories by a fair margin. Hermans didn't quite reach the same potential as Dirk Kaup, but still reached a 76 overall. But I am happy with the Kroff storyline, getting up to an 85 and scoring the winning goal for us in the Champions League final. Our manager rating will end at a 74, but I want to give a big thanks to channel members for supporting the content here on YouTube. If you have any suggestions for what realistic rebuilds you want to see next, make sure to leave a comment, like the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you are new around here, but until next time, this has been Flick. I'll be talking to you all again soon.